You think you've done a wonderful job with your health. You stand on the scale, your numbers look great, and at a time when so many people are obese, your BMI is exactly where it should be. You've succeeded where so many other people have failed. So you pat yourself on the back, but then you have a heart attack two months later. How on earth does that happen? Well, a new study shows us why weight alone doesn't give us the whole picture and why we shouldn't just rely on body mass index when assessing our health and fitness. If we don't pair our BMI with an additional critical metric, we could still be at heightened risk for heart attacks or strokes, and we might not even know it. But too often, and unfortunately, doctors forget to check it in their clinic, myself sometimes included. But it's a metric that you can measure easily by yourself at home, and I'll explain later in the video. But let's start by unpacking what slips through the cracks when we're looking at BMI alone. So there's some good reason to pay attention to BMI. It's been linked to a whole host of negative health issues, from type 2 diabetes to heart attacks to strokes. For example, let's have a look at a meta-analysis that looked at the relationship between obesity and the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So compared to those with a normal weight, the risk was a sobering seven times as high for those whose BMI were in the obese range. And deaths linked to heart disease were two to three times more likely with a BMI equal to or over 35. But what exactly is the linkage? How does excess weight connect to negative health outcomes? Well, it's complex and there are several mechanisms at play, but one of the most important is the extra fat that drives inflammation. So stored fat, it isn't just passively waiting around for when it might be needed as a source of energy. It actually pumps out extra inflammatory compounds and that leads to elevated levels of inflammatory markers in the blood for people who are overweight, and the evidence is increasingly pointing to chronic inflammation as a key driver for things like heart disease. But there's a surprising finding that's come into focus recently. Not all fat is created equal, and that's why we need this other metric in addition to BMI. So let me explain this. The fat that we notice more easily is the kind stored just under our skin. That's called subcutaneous fat. But then there's visceral fat. That's fat that's stored deeper around the spaces between our heart, liver, intestines, and other organs. It's often called belly fat. Interestingly, subcutaneous fat, it doesn't have the same strong link with things like type 2 diabetes compared to visceral fat, which is strongly linked to it. And similarly, chronic inflammation associated with obesity is primarily driven by visceral fat. And that's why BMI alone, it doesn't tell us everything that we need to know. It's possible to have a normal BMI while also having excess visceral fat. So the classic bear belly. So I'm sure that you know someone like this. Someone who's basically lean everywhere except their stomach. And men in particular, that's usually because of excess visceral fat. But this raises a critical question. What kinds of risks are associated with a situation like this, where body mass index is normal, but there's still significant visceral fat that's present. Well, that's where the new study that I mentioned at the start of the video comes in. So it was one of the questions asked by the researchers that they set out to answer. So they looked at a comprehensive set of data from the World Health Organization. It included information drawn from surveys in 91 countries between 2000 and 2020. In total, there were about 470,000 participants. They zeroed in on those with a normal weight according to their body mass index, which is between 18.5 to 24.9, but with high waist circumference. So for women, that means 80 centimeters and above, and for men, the figure is 94 centimeters or more. And it's this metric that's so critical to check in addition to BMI, but it's too often forgotten about. It's a really convenient indicator of the amount of visceral fat that a person has. And with this particular study group, they looked to see how blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, total cholesterol and triglycerides related to waist circumference. So remember, these are people with a normal body mass index. And here's what they discovered. Having a normal BMI but elevated visceral fat, again indicated by high waist circumference, was associated with significantly worse health markers in those without a high waist circumference. So there was a 29% higher risk of high blood pressure and an 81% higher chance of type 2 diabetes. The risk of high total cholesterol was 40% greater and the number for high triglycerides was 56%. And the data revealed something else. This combination of normal weight and high visceral fat is really common. So they found that about one in five adults in the global data set that they looked at fit that description. The researchers point out that this means that we've got a huge problem on our hands because like I mentioned, waist circumference is often forgotten about and most global guidelines, they rely only on body mass index as the primary way in clinical practice to assess a person's risks in relation to obesity. So that means that we have to take charge of our own health. We have to measure our own waist circumference. Otherwise, we might still be at risk without realizing it. 
So how do we measure it and how do we interpret the numbers? Well, the measurement is simple and it can be done at home, but it's critical that we measure it in the right place. Otherwise, the resulting numbers are not going to be accurate. So here's the correct procedure. When you're standing up, locate the top of your hip bone at your side and you want to measure just above that level using a flexible tape measure. And it's helpful to look in the mirror to make sure that you're holding the tape measure all the way around your body. So take the measurement at a normal breath. And researchers have found that checking your waist circumference at home in this manner is just as accurate as a technician in a clinical setting. So this is a simple but accurate check. So now that you've got a measurement, how do we interpret it? Well, if our body mass index is in the normal range, which again is between 18.5 to 24.9, then we can use the numbers that we looked at earlier in the video as a threshold for our elevated risks. So this means for women, it's 80 centimeters or above, and for men, it's 94 centimeters and above. But what if you've taken the measurement and you found out that you're in the group with an elevated risk? Well, the good news is that it's entirely possible to lose that extra visceral fat. And as we've seen, when we do so, we also cut our risks. But what's the most effective approach to do this? Well, that's the question that I tackle in this video here.